And from a great CD called Intellipop. And that's the track called Be Careful What You Wish For from multi talented instrumentalist, vocalist, and uh, world-class musician. She has been here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly once before, and uh, it's always a challenge for me to uh, have her on the show again because she's so busy just taking a little break from a uh, tour with Prince. We welcome back to The Upper Room, Rhonda Smith. How you doing, Rhonda? I'm doing great, Joe. Aren't you nice? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, no, but I mean it. It's... Uh... You know, great to see you with so many creative projects like your own your own independent release. And uh, I had a DJ called me up just about ten minutes ago and wanted to know any uh, new solo CD in the in the making for yourself. I am definitely about halfway through, still scrutinizing on material. Want to really take my time this time, so I'll think for something out maybe early next year. Any kind of changes on it? Uh... Um. I'm going to have some special guests, that's for sure. I, I know one guy who told me he wanted to work on it. John Blackwell. <laughs> of course, you know John Blackwell's going to be on it. That's what he told me in, uh, a few months ago, yeah. That's my guy, and I'm going to be on his, too, hopefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so you're, you're presently on tour with Prince one night alone, and, and you've done about two or three weeks. How, how's things going so far? It's been going really nicely. Um, it's just been getting better every show. The people seem to dig it, and, and it's always a it's always a blessed opportunity. And it's always um, you want to be a little bit concerned at first when you change something. You know, when he changes something, because he has a lot of fans, and it's just like anything else. It's hard to please everybody. Actually, it's impossible to please everybody. Mm -hmm. So it seems that whether he does a hits tour or not. There's always some people who sometimes feel like they're missing something. So we made a little bit of a change. Um, he wanted to just uh, play more music and, and just be a musician for a while and have some fun. Now, th and, is uh, that we're, a we're loving it. The fans seem to also. Uh, we, we thank them for that, definitely. Is that a conscious decision among the group of musicians about saying, hey, come on, let's go with the new material? Um, or is it just Prince saying this is what we're going to do? How, how do you guys work that out? Well, you know, I think it is a conscious decision with everybody. Everybody has to feel well about doing something, just like he wants to make sure that he has the right musicians around him. Mm -hmm. you know, you don't, we don't want to tell people with, with, with different ideas of what you should do. But originally, most definitely, it was inspired from, from that record. Okay. Which um, which deserves to be heard uh, live. It's a little. It's the kind of record where you can take it a little, a little bit more. Live is always the arena where you want to do that. But a record such as that, um, some of the stuff really plays out very, very well, live. Now, some of the change we were talking yesterday that uh, the in-air monitors uh, that you guys are using on stage. How, how tough is it to get uh, adjusted to that, and w any drawbacks or, or positive things with that? I'm sure there are a lot. Um, it's positive. I think the most positive thing that it's good for is when you are singing, if you're someone who generally sings in tune and wants to be able to hear themselves, it's a great thing for that because this thing is fitted it's in, into your ear canal by mold, so it's very, very tight, and, you know, it's like it all connects all your bones together. It's like you're singing with, with a finger in your ear. You're always in tune to what you're doing, so for that, it's great. A little interaction with the audience sometimes gets a little bit funny, because we can't hear what they're saying, generally, because we have a lot of blockage, and we can really only hear what's going into the mics, even um, sometimes when we do these uh, the club member sound checks, which right. are a lot of fun. I think that a lot of fans sometimes get a misconception because they think that we can't hear or in the back or whatever, and it, 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 it's not that we hear what they, they're saying and we're not answering. We, we can't hear what they're saying. Even sometimes when Prince is on the stage without his in-ears, if he's speaking just in his voice to um, the club members, we as the band in the back can't hear what he's saying because we have the in-ears again, and we're communicating with closed mics that we have on the stage to each other so sometimes you want the, the crowd to know that because i think there's been a couple of people who have maybe got the the wrong perception and don't really realize that we actually can't hear unless we physically take these things out of our ears what they're saying so they ain't trying to dog you and oh, not listen no, to you <laughs> they're they're all friendly from uh, it, it's still I just sometimes you know you might have somebody who you, you can't see it because it's dark somebody who might say hi to you because you don't right. hear them 
And then, you know, they think, and you know, maybe they're thinking that, oh, boy, you know, right. this yeah, person is up? tripping or something. They don't <laughs> even want to say hello, and it's really not even about that. Sometimes we just can't hear. Right, right. But, but it's great you guys, with, through the MPG Music Club, just been extending it. It just seems, it seems too good to be real um, for it's a lot of reports. It's been a reports. lot of fun, yeah. and, and uh, it seems to be working out very well. Um, it's really great to be able to be accessible to artists like Prince, and that's what he's... Uh, that's what he's offering, and that's what he's been giving, and the fans have really been loving it. It's really been nice to see that. I've never experienced anything like that in my life before, so I'm, I'm quite impressed with the whole concept. Now, one of the highlights of the show I'm reading is uh, you get to do a solo uh, as far as singing, right? You do a Yeah, we do a little duet on a tune that, that uh, Prince uh, picked and very much liked. He's um, you know, a big supporter of Erica Badu, as most of us are, and... Um, Definitely a big supporter in positive messages, which is what that song is about. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a lot of fun to do that, too. Again, um, it makes it a lot easier with the inners, you know? It's a nice challenge. As far as what you're, uh, you're bringing out on tour instrument-wise, what are you playing these days? Actually, I've gone back to basics, which has been really great. I put my six strings down, and I'm just playing a four-string 75 Fender Jazz bass. Mm -hmm. with a maple neck, and I'm playing a vector four-string acoustic, actually for the majority of the show. Maybe it's about 60-40 at this point. Oh, wow. But, and uh, it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I like to switch it up every time, you know, to keep it a little fresh, and it's been, it's been great. When, when you were playing the bass on When Will We Be Paid in Philadelphia, wow, I could feel that in my chest. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty powerful. Yeah. You know, a lot of that, too, when we're doing with in-ears has to do with the guy who's doing house. You know? mm -hmm. that's, that's a funny comment, too. Some people will say, well, something was too loud, or, oh, my God, she plays so loud. It, that's, that's not something that I, I have control over. That's the guy in the room, generally, you know, right. who's setting those. And, and a lot of nights, he is just nailing it. Mm -hmm. He's a great mixer. Well, I wanted to touch briefly on uh, this past summer, the last time I saw you play in uh, Montreal at the Jazz Festival. And how how nice was it to to play in, in such a, a nice venue again? Uh, I mean, the wonderful. festival and, and Prince playing there with the MPG. It was wonderful. It was just too quick. Yeah. <laughs> but that was a really challenging show, the way you guys did it. You know, the improv improvisation and then the hits. and How, how did you feel uh, the show went being split up like that? It, it, you know what? It's great to do something spontaneous, and it's great to do something new, and that's exactly what it was. And uh, there's an innate energy that's really cool about that when you just don't know what's going to happen next, and you just go for it. So did you get a chance to spend uh, a little time up in Montreal? Very little. Uh -huh. Very little, that's why. But, you know, as soon as I get a break, most definitely I'll try to try to go back down that way. It's a beautiful city. Right. Beautiful people. A lot and of things going on. Lots of things to do. Now, some, some of the other projects, I know, what, what have you been doing lately? I know you worked uh, on the Wayne Brady show, right? I did do the Wayne Brady show for a while when I had um, a little bit of a break. Did a couple of pilots with him. Wayne's a great entertainer, too. He's, he's really funny. Mm -hmm. I like working with these comedians from time to time. It's a lot of fun. And I'm getting actually ready to do a, a nice uh, endorsement deal with Fender. So we're going to have a, a nice little relationship. I love their instruments. I like their stuff. And um, I think that we're going to be able to do some interesting things. Hopefully I can do some little showcases for them and uh, go into a little R&D on some new instruments that they have out that are really, really nice. And, of course, uh, hopefully the uh, the Rainbow Chill, or I should say uh, the, the One Night Alone Tour will resume. And uh, stay tuned and go to mpgmusicclub.com. Totally. And check in with you, Joe Kelly, because yeah. you know what's going on. All we'll the stay time. on top of it. And we, <laughs> <laughs> so... Well, um, let's see. I think we're going to get into something uh, from IntelliPop and uh, the title track, which is just, you know, ITP. I, I never get tired of this song. How, how about, uh, do you like to play it uh, live when you do your shows out there? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, Joe. And I can't wait to put the next one together, do a little bit of a compilation, and then uh, come out and showcase a little stuff. It'll yeah. be definitely fun. We're just so busy with Prince right now and loving it. Right. It's, uh, it's hard to split time up sometimes. And uh, definitely check out Rhonda Smith. She will be, uh, hopefully, very, very shortly. They're taking a little break from the tour and come out strong. Prince One Night Alone. The band's still called the MPG? 
I think so. Yeah, I was, I was thinking, <laughs> should I say Prince in the MPG or? You know, I don't. I have never even asked. I, right. We're just we're it's just the band friends. You know, we're just right. having a good time. Oh, before we get into the music, um, you want to talk a little bit about the band, um, the members who's playing on tour? Because I know uh, the keyboard has changed and everything. Yeah, there's been uh, a keyboard change, and Lord knows we miss Morris. Morris is uh, so animated and such an amazing personality. W what's he up to still on Minneapolis? Um, I think he's probably just probably just doing some other things right now. Maybe he's just taking a break for a minute, very possibly. Morris is always going to be... Mm -hmm. Uh, involved in music. That's why when you say is it the MPG, I don't know. You know, I don't really know. <laughs> it's just you know, a great band. I don't band. really think that one thing replaces another. It's just a large circle of friends in different types of musical um, situations that can be put together at different times. So, um, and uh, Renato, right? Renato Neto is, right. is a Brazilian keyboard player. Just, just amazing. Who brings something a little bit different this time? Mm -hmm. You know, a little different flavor. And he's from Brazil. And uh, I met him when I was playing with Sheila, because he's played with Sheila E for quite a few years. They go back quite a while. She is also uh, a favorite choice of hers for keyboard. Very talented gentleman. And, uh, of course, John Blackwall on drums. and uh, Prince course. Prince on just about everything on yep. stage. <laughs> he, even uh, bringing people and letting them sit on pillows and stuff, I heard. On stage. It's been great, and the people have been loving it, and we've got a great horn section. We started the tour out with Maceo Parker and Greg Boyer, Yeah, wow, a combination that's... of saxophone and trombone. Uh -huh. It was really great. And uh, every now and then we switch it up. The last two nights we had Najee, mm -hmm. who came in and, of course, sounded wonderful. So uh, playing some flute, too, along with Greg. And uh, I believe Candy Dolfer is probably going to step in for some, some shows also. So we'll be alternating horn players every now and then, keeping it fresh. Again, big right. family. You never know who you're going to see. That's right. So uh, You never know, because it's a big family. And sign up for the MPG Music Club, and you can uh, attend some of the sound checks that Rhonda was talking about. And uh, the after. Yo, you did an after show, uh, I guess, in Indianapolis, right? Yes. Yeah. How, how, do, how do you like doing those after shows? I love them, man. The crowd is... Pff, it's the people who make the show, too, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, the after parties are always wilder. Right. And it's fun. Again, it's spontaneous. Just go and play. It's usually hot and sweaty, too. Yeah. And it's tough to get... <laughs> yeah, that's right. And uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how you guys keep up that schedule, you know, with the, with the after shows and parties and, you know, and moving on to the next city and doing the same thing. But... Yep, you know, it's, uh, you're that, blessed. That's, that's yeah. Prince. You right. know, that's Prince. He's a one of a kind, most definitely. Nobody, nobody parties like he does. Nobody right. plays like he does. No and, one and has the energy that he has. And, and he's a clean party, which is kind of yeah. rare, rare in the business. So, yeah. and it's great. Yeah. You know, it's great to have a, it's great to have a clean tour. You know, clean, right. clean food. And people aren't all acting crazy. It's, it's, it's quite refreshing. Yeah. It's very nice. Well, We're I want to. So blessed. That's right. I want to thank you, Rhonda so much and I know it's a busy schedule and uh you know just to, to stop in this is the last show in the uh, the old studio so we're going out in great style well joe yeah. thank you so much for extending the offer to me again for all your support love you guys to death and uh we definitely would love to see you when we come in close proximity that's come right. on down yeah that's right we'll definitely be there and uh we're going to go out with double dose uh Rhonda Smith and telepop and kick off with ITP and then segue right into a track I know sets it off. One plus one plus one is three. You know it. it gets a great response, right? <laughs> yeah. You know it. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Rhonda. Thank you, Joe. You take care. All right. Best to you.